Hello, everyone, and welcome to this new Analyst Angle. My name is Christophe Bertrand. I'm a principal analyst at the Cube Research. Today, I'd like to talk to you about my recent experience at a Commvault's shift event, uh, which took place in London. And more importantly, I want to spend some time uh, reflecting upon Commvault's strategy, uh, where I think they're going and what's going on in general in this market, which is changing at a very fast pace. Uh, the session was introduced by uh, Sanjay Mirchandani. It was a great event, uh, masterfully uh, put together by the marketing team. Everything was on time, but more importantly, the content was fantastic. We got a very good understanding of the strategy uh, that Sanjay is executing against. A few years ago, I wrote uh, when he came on board that uh, definitely the company had already changed. And I can see that a few years later, uh, a lot of the pieces are coming together. And we're going to walk uh, through that in a lot of detail in the next few minutes. So uh, really, the, uh, the way to think about this is Commvault is focused uh, in terms of strategic uh, positioning on supporting their clients uh, to deliver cyber resilience. And what's interesting about that is that it's kind of a new category that I believe is really the only way to look at the market right now. Uh, it's more of an IT infrastructure play, but the truth is, is that it's absolutely key to understand where you fit as a business, and Commvault has done a good, uh, very good job of explaining that to us. First of all, it's about increasing reliability uh, for the end users. It's about improving the redundancy. That means the ability for the business to fail over, applications to fail over, whether on-prem or in the cloud, a lot more in the cloud these days, as you can imagine. Uh, of course, it's also about doing this at scale because you know everything is fun and games until you say at scale at the end of the sentence. And that's exactly what the design point is for some of the solutions that Commvault actually uh, announced uh, also as part of the event. And really it's about uh, simplifying the environment. So controlling the complexity uh, is uh, a key topic. I really like the fact that Sanjay positioned uh, the fact that business continuity is really a thing of the past. It's really about continuous business now. now it sounds a bit funny, I know, but the truth is uh, the business is essential. And cyber resilience uh, is a business issue. Uh, executives obviously are very involved in making sure their environment is very secure uh, and can be uh, can recover from cyber attack, cyber events. So this is what it's all about. Uh, and, and really the way to think about it uh, is to build continuous security, uh, the ability to sort of move your workloads around, move your data around. So they call that a continuous rebalance. Uh, I don't know if it's the best term, but I, I, I think it makes a lot of sense from an IT standpoint. And really, truly, it's about readiness in order to be able to have this continuous recovery. So uh, the, the, the prize is continuous recovery. So what it brings uh, about here is a couple of points, is, is the fact that there's some availability component to this. So how do you maintain some level of availability to the business when you don't know what's going to hit you? And of course, how do you put in place what can be a complex workflow for recovery? Uh, in order to do that, uh, we'll, uh, we'll talk about the product strategy. But uh, let me switch to something else. Let me su switch to some numbers. Let's talk about Commvault's stock price and their performance. You'll see that the strategy has clearly paid off. The execution is paying off nicely. I just took a snapshot from uh, uh, Google Finance, I believe it was. And as you can see, uh, I think the, the story here is very simple. Uh, in the past year, uh, the stock has gone up 110%. So this is something that's extremely important to note because clearly the strategy is working. By the way, uh, although I'm not going to share financial numbers, those are public anyway, uh, but the company is getting closer, inching closer to the billion dollar mark. They're not there yet, but they will be uh, probably in the next 18 months, maybe two years. Uh, there are a number of predictions out there and, and, and projections they've provided. Uh, but again, I think in, in time, we're, we're going to see Convalid at the billion dollar mark. And uh, with a couple of acquisitions they've just made, that may even go faster than we all think. So we'll see. Uh, again, I'm not a financial analyst. I'm not claiming to be. I'm just saying uh, I can look at numbers like anybody else. This is impressive. So uh, again, uh, Sanjay's strategy uh, and the execution, more importantly, that he has put in place in the past five, six years is clearly paying off. And the past year has been even more uh, uh, visibly successful. But let's talk about the market uh, and relative positioning of the company. So we work with ETR Data, one of our research partners, and uh, gives me the ability to look at various vendors in the space. Here are the uh, competitors that Commvault is dealing with are considered in the storage category, maybe 
not the best name for the category, but that's what, what they're covered in. Again, surveying uh, hundreds of IT professionals, ETR has a lot of great data, uh, and it gives us the ability to look at where uh, people are uh, ranking or where companies are ranked uh, relative to each other. So let me explain what you're looking at because it may not be obvious. The net score is really a spending intention score. Uh, it takes into account net new installations, increase in spending in existing installations, uh, it also looks at neutral, those uh, organizations that are saying, I'm not going to spend more with this vendor, I'm not going to spend less, I'm staying about the same. And then it's also looking at spending less and even retiring solutions. So the net score is all the spend more and uh, acquire new minus retire the solution and spend less. So essentially, uh, it gives you uh, how much more the net spending, if you will, that's going to happen. It's relative. It's not a dollar amount. It's just a relative number in percentage points. So that's what you're looking at. And then as a proxy for ma market penetration or market share, you see the provision score, uh, which tells you essentially uh, where, uh, how much penetration the company has in the market. And what I did is I looked at the overall market, but then I was interested in, you know, Convolt more importantly in the enterprise space. So I looked at the Global 2000, which I think is a very fair way of looking at the enterprise space in this, uh, uh, in this uh, topic of cyber resilience, data protection, disaster recovery. Uh, so looking at this, what you can see is that Convolt is extremely well positioned, not only as a net score, meaning a lot more spending is coming their way, uh, and it's extremely pervasive in the global 2000. So really, of course, the challenge for Convolt will be to, to make that happen beyond the global 2000 uh, and, and continue their growth in that way. But clearly, uh, things are looking really uh, very nicely here compared to others. I also want to point out that Rubrik and Cohesity are neck and neck, which is very interesting for other reasons. And you can see, obviously, Dell, because of their... Uh, you know, position in the market, their size are clearly more pervasive than others. Uh, but I would say uh, it's a very interesting finding. You look at, the, again, the stock price progression. You look at the scout for Global 2000. I think you're starting to see uh, that things are, are looking really, really strongly here for, for Convo. Now, let's talk about what that means in terms of a product strategy, market positioning. Let's break that down. So, in terms of the big trends that they've identified, and I tend to agree with them in general terms, look, uh, data protection is over. Uh, so, you know, it's all about cyber resilience now. It's really this conflation of multiple markets. It's combining, for lack of a better term, cybersecurity with uh, disaster recovery in the context of uh, cyber recovery. So there are, there's lots to say, to say here, but Fundamentally, most organizations, especially in the enterprise, have to deal with a number of very interesting trends right now that are sort of being amplified by the uh, constant attacks they uh, are facing. So there's a lot of complexity in IT. Uh, there is uh, definitely an evolving and accelerating threat landscape. There is also a lot happening with AI, and we'll talk about that in a context of Convolt, but AI is obviously changing the threat landscape, but it's also changing the ability to respond to the threat landscape. It's also changing the business itself. So there's so much around AI that we need to talk about here. And then, of course, data compliance and, and really uh, the, the need for privacy and governance is also another big driver. Uh, I would say it's probably one of the other very strong suits that Convolt has playing for them. And then, uh, <laughs> unfortunately, budgets have limits. Now, you look at that and you also combine the fact that the people side uh, can be a problem, a lack, a lack of IT skills, uh, people not really knowing how to work with each other in the context of cyber recovery, so not having necessarily the right workflows, uh, not having the right team um, sort of uh, uh, reactions when something happened, pointing the finger. All of this is combining with those macro trends to make cyber recovery a very complex effort that requires simplification and technology to be able to do this very nicely. Uh, I think, again, uh, uh, think about the, the, the biggest pressures here. I believe it's really around compliance and threats. Those two are driving a lot of the changes uh, and they cannot be ignored. Uh, what this means is that uh, you need to really build resilience and readiness as a fundamental part of the equation. But here's the thing. Nobody can do it all. So let me be clear. 
it's an ecosystem play. We'll break that down in a minute for you in what that means for Convo. Uh, but really where they fit is respond and recover in the NIST framework. But I think they have a big play also in identify, protect, and detect. Now, not everybody can do everything. That's why the integration in the ecosystem, and we'll talk about bi-directional APIs, is absolutely critical uh, to be successful. But there's also a marketing play. Uh, some have, in my opinion, over-pivoted uh, positioning themselves as security companies when really they are really playing in a recovery and response business. Uh, Commvault is not making that mistake. Commvault is squarely positioning themselves in cyber resilience. I think it's a great position, uh, and I think it's exactly uh, where they fit. And by the way, it does not uh, preclude them uh, from taking a broader, bigger role moving forward, especially with their ecosystem. And who knows, maybe more acquisitions. We'll talk about acquisitions in a minute. Let me remind you of the architecture that Commvault has. It's important to understand what they just announced and why it makes sense. Uh, they really break down their architecture in three planes. Uh, there's the storage piece, uh, which is sort of the fundamental component, obviously. There's also a data plane, and that's the area I'm very interested in, because that's where you really have to bring this sort of agnostic view of data. That's going to be important moving forward in the next few years in a context of AI. Uh, it already is, for sure, in other areas. Uh, but it's something that I think is a great advantage. And then there's the control plane, which is, of course, where you do uh, all the authentication, you do network isolation, you can do lots of different things to build and sort of complete what they call a zero trust architecture, which I think is important in a context of cyber resilience. So in many ways, the architecture here is designed for cyber resilience. Uh, so, again, it's all about execution. It's all about how that plays out with a product strategy. Uh, in terms of announcements uh, that have happened recently, there were really some interesting ones uh, that I will double click on. Cloud Rewind is really the acquisition of Apronix and the integration of Apronix. And it's really about the ability to recover uh, essentially a, a full cloud environment. Uh, that's a very powerful capability. It's kind of a quasi HA capability, but played out in the cloud. There have been uh, also a number of enhancements around S3 and AWS protection. That's a big deal, of course, because it's a big platform. It's a great platform for many reasons. Of course, uh, other use cases uh, you can think of might not be far away, but we're not going to talk about those. Uh, there have been also some interesting investments in uh, what they call their, their edge, Hyperscale X, uh, which is really a data protection for the edge. And, and again, Thinking about how that may connect to a broader AI world, that's going to be key. And it's already key for many applications today and many environments. So it's not just a cloud world. It's a, it's a hybrid world. And edge, on-prem, uh, cloud, all of these have a play. Uh, I also like the fact that they've uh, done some great work on Active Directory. It's one of the areas where maybe some vulnerabilities could exist and having a good way to protect and recover uh, from any issues that may come up is critical. No active directory, no access to anything, no more business. So uh, very nice play. And then they've also invested uh, in uh, the Google space and Google workspace specifically, obviously collaboration tools uh, are key. So again, data protection uh, is a complex uh, thing to do in the cloud because the need uh, to protect full stack applications is, is key. And that's where the Apranix piece comes into play. And of course, cost, compliance, uh, and, and managing a very complex and fragmented environment is, is already the challenges uh, that you have to deal with. Uh, I think Commvault has a good understanding of, of, uh, of this because at the end of the day, recovery is not just data. I, I fundamentally agree with that. Recovery is a holistic exercise. It's even more complex if you start throwing in a cyber risk. So I look at the product strategy as a very uh, interesting uh, topic. Um, they position four pillars, uh, cloud first uh, protection, which definitely is a departure from even a few years ago. And it's obviously makes perfect sense. A lot of workloads are in the cloud. I would say though, cloud first protection sounds great, but I want to see SaaS protection as well built in, meaning protecting SaaS workloads. Now they're doing that for some platforms, but there are a lot of platforms to go. So I think we still have some work to do there, and that's my feedback uh, to the team. Uh, AI, obviously, uh, is critical. So protecting AI, 
as a workload or a platform, but also leveraging AI to uh, provide support for better cyber resilience. So it's two sides of the coin. And, and it's important because those are different conversations, but they're also very key. Uh, cyber recovery is uh, obviously uh, the heart of the problem and being uh, focused on providing a secure environment. So these four strategic vectors uh, make a lot of sense. Uh, I would say that for me, adding uh, a strong data management or, or further enhancing data management capabilities uh, is probably something that should also be called out. Uh, but again, uh, the, the devil is in the details here. So let's talk about a couple of acquisitions that we made. We talked about Apranix, uh, but Clumio was also uh, acquired recently. So with that, uh, they really do sort of complete or start adding to uh, what is already a very complete portfolio. So I like, and, and now so the Apranix uh, acquisition is, is now named Cloud Rewind, which is a great name, uh, which is really for those composable applications, the ability to recover everything uh, with the, the, all the components of the application, uh, which is, you know, something that obviously is, is critical if you think about uh, a compromised environment, but there are many other use cases associated with that as well. So this automated, uh, simplified process for recovering is, is very key because there are so many moving parts. It's, it's really a nightmare, candidly. Uh, now, Clumio uh, also is, uh, I think, a very kind of natural uh, addition to, to the team uh, and to the portfolio. Uh, it's really meant for digital natives. I think uh, that's uh, for those, uh, uh, you know, AWS environments. Um, look, I think we'll see more in terms of uh, what this combination uh, of solutions can do. Uh, but it is really, uh, really accretive to the existing Commvault cloud, which we should not forget, which really is great for the traditional IT uh, function. So in totality, and again, execution will be key, but in totality, uh, it looks uh, that definitely that Commvault is positioning itself even more so, in, uh, of course, in the cloud world. Uh, at a time when it's absolutely needed. Uh, these, I, these acquisition, uh, I, I look at, these acquisitions, I look at a fundamental step uh, for what comes next. Uh, I think uh, looking at what is going on in this market with the evolution driven by AI, the evolution driven by cyber uh, risk, uh, the threat landscape, you need to have all of these components. And of course, uh, customers are uh, very, very hybrid these days. Again, I'd like to see more around SaaS uh, data protection, and I'm sure we'll hear more in the future. So, uh, you know, the, the benefit of having cloud-native resilience uh, is, is uh, with Clumio, uh, is really about, you know, the ability to scale from a cloud standpoint. So the ability to secure your copies and, and really providing near recoverability. I think the play here is really uh, the, the, you know, digital natives, it's uh, the scale component, uh, and it's really uh, further protecting your data assets. So uh, let's see how the integration goes. Let's see how execution goes on the product side and the solution side of things. It's going to be about execution at this point. Let's talk about AI. Commvault has an interesting approach uh, uh, to AI, uh, which I think is uh, uh, very logical and, and, and very sound. Uh, they really want to focus on leveraging AI to provide an easier to use product, a better experience for the end user. That makes perfect sense. Uh, I think we'll see a lot of uh, uh, great things in uh, in the market in general and with Convolt around agentic AI and around other processes that it will be able to build in. Look, uh, cyber recovery, data recovery in general terms is very complex. Leveraging AI to make it simpler, it's a great idea. Now, resiliency is important. So I think the ultimate goal is really to provide uh, the ability to improve your resilience index, whatever that may be, or your ability to uh, stand or withstand any type of problem. So AI can play a big role in this. I think that's really the future of uh, AI in the space of data protection and really cyber resilience. That's the outcome. That's where we'll see the most uh, benefit, in my opinion. But there is another aspect that is sort of intertwined in, 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 in here, which is governance. Uh, so promoting, again, uh, responsible AI adoption is key, but I think it's really about the ability to also comply with a number of requirements. So it's great to be resilient, but remember, compliance is not far behind, either because it forces you to be resilient, but more importantly, because 
there is a risk if you're not compliant. You can't just reuse any data for any uh, thing you want. So having AI helping you with the data management component as well and is going to be key. Uh, and, and we are talking here about really more of a data platform play. Uh, I think it's uh, it's interesting to see this approach. Now, there are other uh, vendors uh, in the space who also have extremely strong uh, approaches uh, for and with AI. So it's a competitive world. Look, I believe at the end of the day, this market will evolve. And whether it's Convolt or others, the winners, the people who uh, end up growing and end up uh, becoming the, the final leaders, will be those who really deliver on uh, the best use of AI for their platform and the best execution uh, in their go-to-market. And I think it's all going to be about AI, cyber resiliency being one of the uh, outcomes uh, that drives this adoption. Uh, so think about uh, this in a context of the NIST framework, right? Uh, identify, protect, detect, respond, and recover. Uh, many out outcomes happen at every stage. And I think the key will be to really identify those. I think Convolt is going in this direction. They're doing a good job with that. Um, there are a number of uh, processes, uh, agents they can build. Again, let's see uh, what execution, uh, what the execution is. Time will tell. But having a good understanding of this is critical because it is a team effort. In this framework, you have to work with partners. One thing that I believe Convolt has not done enough of is promote the great way they've done with their bi-directional APIs. So they have a wall of logos across uh, multiple cybersecurity uh, uh, markets where they play with a number of, 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 of great companies, too many to name. Uh, but I think they've really thought through the process. They've really thought through the integrations. And those bi-directional integrations are key. Uh, now, the point being is that a cyber resilience solution has to be uh, based on teamwork, not just for the teams executing the cyber recovery, that's a big issue, but also for the technologies that have to work in unison. And there's a lot of work to be done, a lot more work will be done, but I think Gumvolt has been maybe underplaying their hand, talking about the great things they do. So it's also uh, maybe uh, another area that will be the key to differentiation and success moving forward, how well you integrate with the ecosystem. So look, it's been a solid execution uh, for Convolt. Clearly the numbers show it. Very strong uh, uh, executive bench, uh, the results show it. Uh, they did not pivot on security or over pivot on security and are truly embracing cyber resilience with a clear explanation of what uh, they do and what they don't do. It's a solid product. Uh, it's a solid product strategy, and the acquisitions they've just completed uh, are really a very strong sign. And by the way, it's a departure from a few years ago. Convolt was very, very shy. Uh, didn't make many acquisitions until recently. Uh, so I think uh, we see, again, uh, the focus on understanding the market, serving your customers, expanding uh, the capabilities in a way that makes sense from product strategy standpoint is really thought through here. Uh, we. I've seen also that uh, they uh, really understand the various personas at play. Uh, so it's not just about traditional storage or IT professionals. It's also about working with the cybersecurity teams, the cyber, the incident response teams, et cetera. Well, look, uh, I think it's a challenge and an opportunity, uh, not just for Convolt, but for other vendors in the space. Do you have the go-to-market, the sales teams and the marketing to truly serve all of these personas, engage with them uh, and help them? understand how to work together to be successful. Uh, it turns out that uh, we were exposed as part of this event to a very interesting exercise, tabletop type of exercise that Convolt runs uh, for the client where they really simulate uh, a cyber attack and all that could happen and give people different roles. And that really shows and puts into perspective the various personas and maybe the lack of preparedness that many organizations have, the lack of communications, uh, it really exposes uh, a lot more than just the technology. As a matter of fact, it's really about the people and the processes. So I think it's a great approach. It's a great way to really educate the market. I expect Convolt to do more. And I think the more they do in this area, uh, the better it will be for them. Now, again, uh, do not underplay the great work you do with uh, 
with your partners. Uh, that's really my message to you. And But uh, my message is also uh, to the marketing team. I think you've done a great job. It's been a great rebirth in many ways, uh, or birth maybe. Uh, I think it's an absolute necessity in this market. And my message to uh, end users, people considering the various players in this market, look, it's a very competitive market. There are great solutions out there. I think Convolt is doing a great job. Uh, I think they have some cautions. They have some things they have to truly execute on. But there are other competitors out there. And it is going to be a very interesting uh, couple of years. Uh, as I said, the ability to really deliver on cyber resilience, the ability to really go to market in a way that addresses all of your needs as an end user, the ability uh, to really integrate with an ecosystem uh, that you may be using as an end user so that it is reasonably seamless, so that the workflows make sense, so that it can really allow you to deliver on your cyber resiliency. That's going to be key. How much AI helps is going to be, I think, a big proof point in how in what happens here. Look, it's a very dynamic market. There are some uh, very big players in play here. Uh, I expect a lot of uh, competition. Uh, it's a great time uh, for the cyber resiliency space. I think we're seeing a lot of evolution. I think it's a great time for Convolt. Uh, and uh, I expect to see uh, more investment in this market from them. I expect to see a lot more uh, competitive reactions too. Uh, so let's stay tuned. I will be covering other vendors as well. Uh, but in the meantime, I'd like to thank uh, you for watching me and I will be uh, seeing you on the next one. My name is Christoph Bertrand. I'm a principal analyst with the Cube Research. Talk to you soon.